Howdy and welcome back to another Bevy video. This week I decided I want to focus on some polish for the game, so I made the particle system more robust and I added more animation support. I also now support multiple enemies and finally set up some UI, and I think I actually have a nice way to handle UI in Bevy. Finally, I've made it possible to win the fight and it dumps you into an overworld state. Next week, I think I'm going to start working on some of the core overworld features, and I'm really starting to like where the game is at overall. As always, this is set up on a branch on the GitHub linked in the description, and you're free to take and steal any of the code to use in your own projects. With the Bevy Game Jam coming up, I'm excited to see how much of this can be easily ported into another game. So without further ado, let's start looking at how all of this was done. The first thing I wanted to do this week was a little bit of polish. I have a couple of reasons for that. One is of course that this is made for YouTube, so nicer visuals make for better videos, but there's also practical reasons. Adding animations for events in the game take time in the game loop, and actually need to be handled carefully. For example, when I added an enemy death animation, I needed to add a pause state in the combat loop, so a dying enemy wouldn't start attacking the player. It actually takes some core logic to leave time like that in the state flow for animations to play. My actual death animation is a pretty simple lerp of an angle and scale, and I hope this should be generic for many different things I want to despawn in the game. I've also created a standard lifetime component that just ticks down and despawns the entity when it runs out. We'll see more uses of this throughout the video, but it's nice just to have a set future time to delete something and then forget about it. For particles, I actually set up a full particle system implementation like I did in an old video. Still, everything is done on the CPU of sprites, and I haven't run into any performance hits yet, so I'm happy. I followed Unity's pattern of having a core emitter with many optional components that it can add to its particles. Every time the timer finished, it will spawn another particle based on the particle descriptor provided. It might be nice in the future to do some object pooling here to reuse dead particles, but I don't think I need it yet. One major quirk is I need to be able to despawn the emitter at some point, but I want the particles to be children of the emitter, so I don't need to manage their transforms as much, and I can keep my hierarchy clean. I tried a couple of different options, but I found the easiest solution was to spawn a completely separate entity that will be the parent of the particles. This entity can see when the emitter despawns and queue up its own death using the lifetime component, so that all the particles get to finish their lives before the parent despawns. This also allows me to have a moving emitter like I use for the fireball because the particle's real parent stays static. Overall, this seems to be a pretty stable and flexible system for now, and the only major limitation is that for emitters that will live a long time, the children vector of the particle parent will start to grow in leak memory, but I don't think that's a problem I can't solve when it comes up. I'll quickly tangent to answer why I'm resisting using community plugins like Bevy Hanabi for this. First off, this is a long-term project, and taking dependencies in Bevy is still kind of risky. With the short update cycle and no backwards compatibility, it means that each version of Bevy I would have to wait for every dependency to get updated, and if that person abandons their plugin, then I would have to take ownership of it myself. Worse yet, they might change the API in a way that I disagree with, and then I'd be stuck forking it and owning it anyway. For some things, like Bevy Easing and the Inspector, I'm comfortable that they will get updated fast and I can take ownership if I need, but for more integrated subsystems like the Particles, I want to just have the implementation in-house. Back to the actual game though, the Particles and Def Animation are pretty much all the polish I did this week, but I'm hoping that polish will get faster and easier as I build better foundational systems. Next week, I might add some screen shape, idle animations, and other juice to really make the game feel alive. Next up, I added support for multiple enemies. Throughout the code, I was using query get single to find the player target, and I stand by this. It was nice to get all of the core flow going before adding any complexity. Now, when it was time to add more enemies, I just had to follow the crashes and change the logic in each spot in a single pass. Basically, all I did was give each enemy a slot ID, and the game is locked to a max of four enemies at a time, so this should work perfectly. The slots determine the enemy's position and later on are used to set their UI locations. Then, when it's time to attack, I can have the player find the minimum occupied slot and target that enemy. I might change this in the future to have every single enemy attack in order, but for now I'm happy not waiting through 4 attacks each time I want to test something. I needed to change my attack component to now feature both an attacker and a target though, and I just grab entity references for this. 
This week I got very comfortable keeping entity references, but we'll see if that comes back to bite me as time goes on. I also changed my attacking functions to not be generic, but instead just look at the attacker and defender to figure out who to damage and how. The action button timing still needs to check the game state though, to determine if it's a defending press or a critical damage press. Finally, I changed when def was detected, so now when a hit event is sent, a def check is performed which sends a def event. I don't know if I like this chaining of events, but it seems to work for now and it makes it easy to trigger the def animation. Overall, I think this is a solid combat flow and I'll obviously be coming back here often to redesign and add new features, but it seems to have all the core aspects I want for now. The next major task I did this week is setting up some UI. This is actually pretty simple, but as always with every UI, it's just a little bit painful to get all the values right. I think it's mostly my fault this is painful because I have no Flexbox experience outside of Bevy, but I really just can't get my head around it. To create the health bars, I set up all the nodes I would want first. One to be the parent, and we'll set its size and position absolutely in an update function. Then I wanted a nice outline for the bar, two color fillings, one for the background red and one for yellow, and the text to show the health numbers. Then, at the end of this function, I set up the hierarchy. I actually think breaking the two steps up like this makes for a much more readable layout, because I can see each node and I can see how they relate to each other without all of the horrible clutter of trying to do it all at once. I also tagged every UI element I need to update here, and I'm keeping the components internal to the UI module, because I really shouldn't access these anywhere else. In an update function, I wanted the enemy's health bar set up in world space, so I used the nice camera helper function world to viewport to get the pixel coordinates of under each enemy. I think Bevy UI recently flipped which Y values were up and this function feels like it was forgotten then, so I manually flipped the Y values. Now I just forced the size and position to be exactly where I want the health bars, and it seems to be pretty resilient to all the crazy resizing I can do. My one major complaint is that text doesn't resize, so eventually it'll cause the UI to break and look bad, but it seems that there isn't a great workaround for this and the font size is not resolution dependent. I also have the health bars check if the entity they are attached to still exists in the query, and if it doesn't then they'll despawn themselves. I kind of like this pattern of entities checking if other entities are still alive and reacting to that. I've also used this pattern to do some lazy spawning for the projectile particles. I then made a nice player UI with the same pattern and a player icon. Unfortunately, it seems that Bevy still doesn't support Texture Atlas sprites and UI, so I just made a standalone PNG for the player icon. Overall, I think this UI looks fine and I'm excited to try to animate some of this in the future. For the final update, I added the basic infrastructure for the battle to end and for the player to enter the overworld. I haven't done anything special here, I just spawn in a fade effect after the particles are finished and I'll also want to check for any other winning events like level ups to have finished playing. Then, when the screen is covered, I despawn everything combat related. Finally, now in the overworld state, I have the player movement system that just lets the player wander around in the gray void. There's not much here, but this is the main work of next week. Overall, I'm very happy with how this project is coming along, and I think it's all holding together pretty well. As always, if you have any feedback on this style of video, or the project in general, please let me know in the comments or on my Discord. As always, thank you so much to my wonderful Patreons and YouTube members, and thank you for watching.